Okay, so far, we've learned many ways of uh, solving quadratic equation, right? So today's notes about methods of solutions. So unlike what we did so far where I ask you to solve in search your way, like maybe use company to score method, maybe use square rooting both side method and so forth. In this section, guess what? They're just gonna give you a quadratic equation. You get to solve whichever method you want. Does that make sense? So obviously, which method works every time? <laughs> okay, completing the square method works every time. Also, quadratic, quadratic equation. equation. Does that make sense? But uh, do you always want to complete the square or use a quadratic equation? Oh, no. no. So we're going to talk about <laughs> when to use which method so that it's easiest for us. Does that make sense? And it will take us least amount of time, right? So it, rather than even completing the square method, the you know, quadratic equation would always work, right? Quadratic formula, okay? So which are the three methods that we're going to talk about? Well, first, who remembers? Where, what was the very first method of, uh, that we learned in solving quadratic equation? Even before this uh, chapter. Chuck? Factoring. Factoring, exactly. So we learned how to factor, right? For like a uh, whole chapter, we learned how to factor. But will all quadratic equation, will you be able to factor every quadratic no. equation? No. So that's, that's why we learn all these other methods, right? So after factoring, we learn something about, what's the second method we learned? Do you remember? Perfect. Yeah, well, you get a perfect square, and with the perfect square, what do we do? We square, square root both sides, exactly. So we remember we square root both sides? And then the last one we learn, I mean, not last one, third one we learn is the? Completing the square method, right? So let's, let me just write that down. And what's the fourth method then? Completing the square method? Quadratic formula. You guys remember this? Okay. So there are four methods that we learned. So first of all, we're going to talk about when we should then factor. Okay. So when you get the homework question today, um, you should know which method you should be using. Okay. So when do we then factor, guys? When should we use factoring method? Oh. Chuck. Oh, okay. Oops. Oh, okay. First of all, the trinomial you get should equal to what? Zero. 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 And when the trinomial equals zero, do you always try to factor? Yeah. No. When should we use factoring? This is maybe too obvious. When can we use factoring method? When the trinomial, first of all, the trinomial must equal to zero, right? Because we have to use a zero product property. But what kind of trinomials do we need in order to factor? Yeah. Oh, okay, you want this, and but no. Yes. No. The, maybe this is too easy. The trinomial must be factorable. factorable. If it's not factorable, you can't use factoring method. So, so you have to. You must be able to factor the trinomial, and it has to equal to zero. Then you use factoring method, right? For example, something like this. Look at this trinomial. Okay, you got one x squared plus seven x plus twelve equals zero. Look at this trinomial. Should we use quadratic formula on this one? Or use completing the square method and so forth? Would you do that? No. Yeah, factorable. if it's factorable, it's much easier, right? I mean, you could use it, but isn't this a lot faster? Do you know how to factor this trinomial, guys? Yeah, because look at the leading coefficient is 1, right? So everybody go ahead and factor our way. We should all be able to factor this. So the leading coefficient is 1, and this trinomial is factorable, okay? All right, so let's see. Uh, who's got this one here? Who, who knows how to factor this? Let me call somebody random. How about Joseph? What'd you get? So you're thinking about which two numbers can you multiply? You get 12, and when you add, you get 7 because the leading coefficient is 1, right? 3 and 4. So guess what? What does that come to? X, what? Exactly, x plus 3 times x plus 4. Of course, the whole thing equals 0. And now we could use the zero product property, right? Since it equals 0, right? When would this be true? Uh, yes, uh, Paige? Okay, hold on. Let's finish this up and I'll come back to you. So, when is this true? This is true if, Jason? X plus 3 equals 0. Yeah, or? Yeah, and do we know how to solve these? Okay, go ahead and finish it up. Okay. So, did you all get negative 4? Or negative 3 as your solution? Yes. Easy enough? Okay. All right. Thank you. So do you see when to use factoring? Now, there's another time when you want to use factoring. Okay, this may be so, maybe it's easy, but here. When c is equal to 0, you want to factor. 
So when you have this formula, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, when c is equal to zero, you won't even see c, right? Right? So it will just be ax squared plus bx equals zero, right? Why do I say this? In other words, when you have something like this, whoops, try to, try to hide the answer. Okay. When I have something like this, you see my c right now is zero, right? Because you don't see any c. So why do I want to factor this? Do you want to use quadratic equation on this one? Or complete the square method or any other one? No. Why do, you, why do I say you want to factor? Two people see it? Three? This is one of the easiest case. Where you, okay, four or five. Lot of, talk to your group. Tell them. What do you guys think? Okay, so a lot of you see it. So, turns out, remember when we factored? The easiest way to factor is what? Using the? GCF, right? So when you don't have any constant term, or if you don't have a number, isn't there a GCF? What is your GCF in this case, guys? X, X and that's it's really easy to factor, right? All you do is, all you get is just simply X times three X plus two equals zero. Isn't that nice? So when you don't have a constant term, this is actually the easiest case, right? You could uh, solve a quadratic equation. All you have to do is factor out your GCF, right? And by the way, can I divide both sides by X? No, then you lose one of your solution. You can't divide both sides by some variable when it is equals to x, when it equals to zero, right? Do you understand? Because if I do, I will lose one of my solution. Can I divide both sides by some number? Is that okay? Yeah, but can you divide both sides by some variables when it equals to zero? When an equation equals zero? No, right? Then you lose all your solution. Do you understand? If you could do that, then why not divide the whole thing by x and then divide the whole thing by 3x minus 2 and get 1 equals zero? Right? It doesn't give you anything, does it? Do you see what I'm saying? So you don't want to divide both sides by some variables, right? Expression with variables in them when, when the whole thing equals zero because you lose your solution, okay? So when is this true? When do, when do we get this whole thing equal to zero? Remember again, zero product property says when? Two people see it? That's it? Okay, Brianna. Or? Exactly. This is true when each of these factors are zero. You guys remember this? Same way as before, right? So, of course, when x equals zero, the whole thing is zero, right? Zero times anything is zero, right? What about this? 3x plus t equals zero. When is that true? Subtract 2 from both sides and divided by 3. Don't we get negative 2 thirds? So what do we write as our solution? How many solutions do we have for this? Two. Don't forget to write down x equals zero. Sometimes people forget that, okay? Then you get it wrong. Because there are two possible ways for this whole thing to equal to zero, right? When x equals zero or when x equals negative two thirds. So there you go. So this is the uh, easiest case. When the constant term, the c is zero, if it's not there, all you have to do is factor out your GCF, okay? And it's really easy, okay? So that's when you want to use factoring, right? You probably don't want to use any other method than this. This is the uh, simplest way, isn't that right? Okay. Okay, so next method we learned was what? After factoring, we want to square, square root both sides. Very good. And I put this plus or minus because whenever you square root both sides, you got to put the square plus or minus on the uh, side where the ver uh, number is, right? You guys remember this? So if you don't, then you lose one of your solution and don't get it right. right? Now, when do we square root both sides? Obviously, you can't do this every time. When can we do this? Yeah, when you have something square on the left side, right? So I wrote it this way. Uh, the whole side of an equation with the variable is square equals to some number, or easier way of saying is if you have a perfect square on the left side, right? That's what that is, right? Perfect square means something square, right? If you have a perfect square equals to some number, then we can use square root method, per square rooting both side method. And here's an example. Okay? X minus four whole thing square equals to three. Notice x minus 4 squared, that is a perfect square, isn't it? Okay, something squared. So all we have to do is what, class? Yes? Take out the squared part of x plus 4 and put it on 3x square root 3. No, you, all you have to do is, if the whole thing on the left side is squared, Michael, all you have to do is just square root both sides. Just makes it easy that way, doesn't it? When I square root both sides, what do I get? How about, okay, angel. Let's square root both sides. What do we get when we do that? 
Exactly, x minus 4 equals 2 plus or minus fat 3. Because what does the square root and the square do? They cancel out. Do you guys remember this? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and finish it up. See what you get. Oh, wait. So when I do this, uh, did you all get x minus 4 equals to positive or negative square root of 3? All right, what do we do next here? How about um, Brendan? Exactly, and what do we get? Good, I like how you put four first, right? We want to put the square root at the end, right? So how many numbers does this represent, guys? Two. two. What are those two numbers? How about uh, Lindsay? Um, it is x equals four plus fat three mm -hmm. and x equals four minus fat three. Or, uh -huh, or x equals, okay, so there you go. So I wrote the smaller one first, x minus fat three comma x plus fat three. Is this easy? No. Can I add these together somehow? No, they're not like, you could think of them as not like terms, right? This 4 is a rational number, square root of 3 rational, you can't. All right, so there you go. Easy enough? Now, sometimes they get a little bit creative in this kind of question. Uh, instead of them giving you something square, okay, guess what they give you? They give it to you, it goes something, remember what PST stands for? Perfect square, square trinomial. So they give you something like this. And you may say, wait a minute, that doesn't look like something that we're used to, but yeah, what is x squared minus 4x plus 4? Sometimes they give it to you this way because look at that trinomial. Isn't that a square of a binomial? Which binomial is this square of? x minus 2. So instead of them just giving it to you as x minus 2 squared, they multiply it out and give it to you. But you have to recognize that this is nothing more than simply x minus 2 squared. Does that make sense, Aiden? So what do I do here in this case? So again, we use square root both yeah, sides. Yeah, we square root both sides. It's just you have to understand that this trinomial is a perfect square trinomial, right? Does that make sense? Right? You have to recognize that's a square root of a binomial, right? <coughs> Instead of then giving to you as x minus 2 squared, they multiply it out and give it to you. You see what I mean? That's the only difference. Okay, go ahead. Finish it up. See what you get. Okay, Royce, what do I get after this then? What do I do? Square root. I square root it. Tell me what to write. You're right. Good. Positive or negative last seven. And of course, square root and the square root, they cancel out. So, of course, what do we do, guys? We add two. And how many people got x equals to two minus rest seven or x equals to two rest seven? Very good. Easy enough? Okay. Do so you get the idea? Here. Okay. So sometimes they don't give it to you so simple like this, where something is square, they you know, multiply it out. But you have to recognize that this is a perfect square trinomial. Is that okay? All right, let's move on to the next part. So of course, next uh, method is completing the square method. Uh, when do we want to use completing the square method? Now, I know that we could use this every time, right? Because completing, completing the square method is really powerful. You could use this every time, but we, we know quadratic formula also, don't we? So why not then just use quadratic formula? Are there times where you want to use complete square method? Yeah, there is a particular time when you want to. Um, okay, when you can't factor exactly, because you know if you could factor, you would have used factoring method. When do we want to use complete the square method? When we have the quadratic equation? Do we even ever? Do we want to even bother to want to do this? When is the ideal, ideal time when you want to complete the square? Yes, Lindsay. Okay, when the like the x squared is mm -hmm. one. Good. We want to make sure when you have in this form, we want that a to be one. Yeah. If a is not one, remember we have to divide both sides by a. And if you're going to do all that work, why not just use quadratic equation, yeah. right? Quadratic formula, right? Yeah. Okay. Not only that, also yes. And the b should be an even number. Yeah, we want b to be even number. Why? E exactly. You have to remember to get that number that you have to add to both sides. It's b over two squared. And when you divide b by two, if b is odd number, you get fractions, right? Right, if you're going to get fractions and things like that, why not then just use com uh, quadratic formula, right? So very good. This is the only time that you will really use this, okay? If, you have, if you're given a choice. Now, if I said you, you have to use a complete square method, then you have no choice, right? But if you had a choice, this is a time when you might want to use this. Does that make sense? Of course, the trinomial, you know, if it's factorable, you would use factoring method. So you want to use this when A is 1, okay, and B is an even number. And C is some integer. I kind of put that in there because if C is not an integer, like for example, if C is some fraction, right? Would you want to use complete square method? 
No, because you would have to multiply both sides by the denominator, right? Then a won't be one anymore. Does that make sense? So I put that in there. So here is an example. Is this a good one to uh, use comparing the square method on? Your a is one. First of all, is this trinomial factorable? Because if it was, you probably don't want to use comparing the square method, right? Is this factorable? Are there numbers such that when you multiply them together, you get negative five, but when you add, you get positive six? No. Nope. Well, yeah. yeah. X squared plus six x minus. Yeah. Is there such number? Yeah. No. Some of you say, what about what about five and one? Yeah, five and one. Yeah. Okay. When you add, you get six, but yeah, you you don't get negative five, do you? Five times positive one doesn't give you negative five, does it? So this doesn't work out. So, but look at my a is one and b is even. So we could just use the comparing the square method. Why? Because it's shorter than using the quadratic formula, isn't it? Does that make sense? Okay, so what is, what is it that we need to do? First of all, what's our first step? So our a is one, who remembers? One person? How do we complete the square? Okay, a lot more. Okay, Aaron? I add five. Then, what do we need to add both sides by? Matthew? What do we do? How do we complete the square now? Exactly. We need to add both sides by 6 over 2 square, right? Now, on the left side, well, 6 over 2 is 3, right? So on the left side, am I going to write plus 9 or just leave it as uh, 3 squared? Plus 3 squared. Yeah, we want to write as pl plus 3 squared. You guys remember why? On the right side, we should write as 9, right? Why do we leave it as 3 squared? Because the binomial that you get is what, Camilla? Yeah, x plus 3 is that same number. So why, why write as a 9 when you know this is going to be simply x plus 3 squared? Does that make sense? You guys remember that? And on the right side, of course, this equals to 14. And of course, from here, it's the same as square rooting both sides method, right? Go ahead, everybody finish it up. I'll wait. Okay. As you can see, this is a lot faster than uh, quadratic formula, using quadratic formula, right? But of course, you only use this when a is 1 and b is an even number, okay? So, how about, uh, who could tell us what to do next? How about, Libby? Um, you mm -hmm. Good. And of course, when you subtract 3, what do we get? Then you get um, x equals 2. Are you sure it's 3? You're subtracting 3 from both sides. Yeah, negative 3. Very good. So you get x equals to negative 3, right, plus or minus square root of 14. Yes? And of course, how many number does this represent? 2. 2. Okay. There are negative 3 minus red 14 and then negative 3 plus red 14. Easy enough? Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Do you see how, do you see when to use the complete square method? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. All right. And let's move on to the, the next uh, method, which is what? Our favorite yeah, quadratic formula. But it's not like you don't want to use this every time, right? Even though it will solve everything. So when do we want to use the uh, quadratic formula? Uh, when <coughs> should we do this? When all, when all else, yeah. When, when all these things that we did. When, when, yeah, when, none of, when all those three methods that we talked about doesn't work. When all previous methods did not work. Or, this is important, or if you forgot how to do any of the other ones. Okay. <laughs> then, okay. So it will always solve it, right? Okay. So, um, but you shouldn't forget because I'm going to ask you to do all three methods also. Okay, not, I'm not, you're not going to just have, you know, I'm not going to have you do any methods you like. Okay. Anyway, so, uh, of course, how do we use this? First of all, it has to be in this form, right? On the homework, you will see tonight, they're not going to give it to you in that standard form for the quadratic equation. They're going to make it all kind of interesting. We'll do some of those, okay, and how do you deal with it, but... It must be in this form in order to in order for you to know what A, B, C are, right? Okay, so once you know your A, B, C, what are you going to do? Just, what do you do? Then you just plug it, in. plug it in to the quadratic formula. And of course, whenever you plug in, don't forget to put, don't forget to use what? Parentheses, right? Yeah, don't forget to use the parentheses. By the way, remember that song, X equals negative B? It's all over what? All over 2a. Some of you did this. Some of you did. Is this okay to do? Some of you just divide that by just that. Would you get the right answer if you did that? No, no please don't do this. This is remember the song. All over 2a. It's not just part of it. You got to divide the whole thing by 2a. Some of you on the quiz only divided that by to the uh, where the square root was. That's not correct. You got to divide the whole thing by uh, 2a. Anyway, 
Okay, so that's that's all the methods that we learned so far. And now we know how to solve every single quadratic equation you will ever see. Does that make sense? Okay, of course there are some other ones where it looks kind of interesting, but for now we know how to do them. Okay, any question? Does this make sense? Let's do some examples then. Okay, here we go. So take a look at example one. This one says solve this equation and they don't tell you which method you should use. So you get to choose whichever method you want. But look, they get kind of creative. They don't give it to you in a sort of nice trinomial kind of way, right? They give it to you this way. What are you going to do when you, they give it to you this way, guys? Yeah, you don't want to freak out. All you have to do is... So, okay, listen. What is... What is... What is it that we want to get rid of when we have something like this? You want to get rid of all the... Denominators, right? And of course, when you have denominators, you get restrictions, right? So you got to think about the restrictions. What are your restrictions, by the way? Negative 1, negative one, and, three over two. Negative one and 3 over 2. So be careful. So let's write that down. But once you know the restriction, what are we going to do? How are we going to solve this? You need to multiply both sides by D. How do we get rid of all the denominators? Multiply both sides by D. Least common denominator, LCD, right? Which is simply the product of the two denominators, right? So let's write down the restrictions and then multiply both sides by the LCD. Go ahead, everybody try. So let's keep these restrictions in mind. If our solution comes out to either negative 1 or 3 over 2, we can use one of those, right? So we'll write that on top. And the LCD is this. Some of you said, could we have cross multiply? Yes, this is a proportion problem, right? But when you multiply both sides by the LCD, that's what you end up doing anyway, right? So did you all multiply both sides by the LCD like this? Right? Do you see how things will cancel out? Okay. Go ahead. Everybody simplify it then and see what you get. Okay. And just make it so that it equals to zero first, right? Because you're going to get some trinomial, right? You're going to make it equal to zero and see which method we should use to solve that trinomial. Oh, wait. Go ahead. Everybody try. So when you multiply both sides by the LCD, things cancel out. So you're going to multiply the two binomials like this, right? X plus 1 times 4X minus 3. 5X minus 3 times... Uh, 3x minus 3. What do we get on the left side when you multiply this? Remember, you, you guys remember how to multiply binomials together? What do we get here? On the left side, it becomes? Yes, Carly? 4x squared plus mm -hmm. x minus 3. Good. Okay, when you simplify, that's what you get. 4x uh, plus x minus 3, right? Yeah. On the right side, what do we get when you multiply this out? Yes, how about Samira? You got it. 10x squared plus minus 15x minus 6x plus 9. And of course, when you simplify, you get 10x squared uh, minus 21x plus 9. Right? Of course, we got to make this whole thing equal to 0. Right? That's how you solve uh, quadratic equations, right? So when we make it to 0, what do we do? Subtract both sides by? Which one get we, should we get rid of? 4x squared or 10x squared? 4x squared. Smaller one first. Okay, let's subtract the whole left side. Okay, go ahead, everybody do that. Let's see what we get. Okay. So when you when you uh, subtract the whole thing, who's got the... Uh, Eugene, what'd you get? Exactly. The whole thing equals to what? Equals yeah, that's, what, that's, that's what's really important here, right? We want to make sure this trinomial equals to zero. Otherwise, we don't know how to solve. Now, here, now, do you see how we did all this work? Now we're up to a place where we, yeah, we get to, oh yes, we should divide both sides by two because do you see, always simplify, right? What goes into uh, each of the uh, factors? Two. So you should always divide by two and get 3x squared minus 11x plus six, right? Now we get to decide which method. We get four methods to choose from, right? The first one, factoring, second. So, and by the way, that's the order that you should think of, right? First, you try to factor. Secondly, you try to square root both sides. Third, you do complete the square. And then, if nothing else works, then you do a quadratic formula. Which method should I use here, Carolyn? In this. Divide both sides by 3. Be if you do, then you get 11 here. So that's not going to help. Yeah. So, which method should, you, should we use? We got four methods. Factoring, square root both side, computer square, or quadratic formula. Okay, you could use quadratic formula, you will get the answer, yeah. Turns out this one factors. Yeah, this trinomial factors. Okay, so yeah, but if you didn't see that, 
you could have used a uh, quadratic formula. By the way, if, if you know if it factors or not, um, there's a nice way to know whether it factors. But we'll learn, okay, we'll talk about that later. Anyway, so it factors, okay? Go ahead, everybody factor, see what you get. Oh, wait. Okay. Guys, some of you are saying, how do I know this factors? Uh, do you guys remember last time we learned something called discriminant? Yeah. If you look at the discriminant of this, you get, uh, so we know this only factors when the discriminant is not only positive, and, but if the discriminant is a perfect square. So that's a little, wow. yeah. Good. Anyway, so that's, that's later. Okay, but go ahead, uh, everybody factor. First of all, 3x squared, you know, it's got to be what? 3x and x. x. Okay, that's, all right, so that's one, okay, that's, you know, it's got to be 3x. Now, how do we get, well, 6, there are many ways, 1, 6, 2, 3, which one should we try first? 1, 6, or 2, 3? Two, 2 and 3. So does it work, 2 and 3? Uh, yeah, if you make two, negative 2 and negative 3, it works, doesn't it? Right? If you don't believe me, you can multiply it out, right? Isn't this what we get? Okay, so there you go. This is only true if 3x minus 2 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0. And of course, you get two solutions. x equals 2, 2 thirds, or x equals 2, 3. Now, uh, we have to, we're not done, because we got to check and see whether or not any of these are restrictions. What were our restrictions again? Uh, let's go back. Yeah, 3 over 2 and negative 1. Are these restrictions? No, oh, this was 2 thirds. That's okay. It's not 3 over 2, is it? So there you go. We found the uh, solution. Now, could you have used quadratic equation? Yeah. yeah, you get the same answer. Okay. And like I said, that's a little hint. If you look at the discriminant, if the discriminant comes out to be positive, of course you're going to have solutions. But if it's actually a perfect square, um, you get it's, it's something that you can factor. Anyway, all right, uh, let's move on. All right, let's do one more. So they give you something like this, and they ask you to solve any method that you like. Again, look at this. Uh, they don't just give it to you nicely, do they? They make you work a little bit. So what should we do in this? Again, we multiply both sides by D. LCD, which is 18. Okay, very good. Go ahead. Multiply both sides by the L uh, LCD. Uh, look at the trinomials that you get. Okay, and let's think about which method is the best. Okay, 18, because isn't 18 the LCD? 9, 6, and 2, right? 18, right? All three numbers goes into 18, right? Okay, and that's the smallest number. Go ahead, everybody try. All right, so when we do this, what do we get on the left side? How about, uh, okay, how about somebody, Aiden? When I multiply 18 to both sides, what do I get? Um, 36x squared plus 18. Wait, when you multiply 18, the 9 and 18, they cancel out, don't they? Yeah. Good, 4x squared. Plus 3x plus equals 9. Yeah, equals 9. Does that make sense? And of course, 2 times 2x squared is 4x squared, as Aiden said. And then you want to make it equal to what again? You want to make sure the whole thing equals to? 0. Okay. All right. Okay, at this point, it equals 9, but on the left side, it's not a perfect square, is it? So you know you want to make it. You can't square root both sides. So anyway, so when we do this, uh, what do you think would be the best way to solve this trinomial? By the way, is this factorable? If you look at the discriminant, this becomes a positive number, but it's not a perfect square, so you can't factor. So you're going to use, yes, Matthew? Quadratic, quadratic function, formula. Is that right? Go ahead and use the quadratic formula. Go ahead. Finish it up. Okay, see what you get. Because this trinomial, can, you can't factor. Okay. So did you all use the quadratic formula? Uh, formula to plug it in like this? Yes. Did you use parentheses? Yes. Okay, so when you do this, don't you get square root of negative, I mean x equals negative 3 plus or minus square root of 1, 5, 3? Yes. What do you do with 1, 5, 3? You gotta simplify. What is, there's a common factor of 3 and 3, right? There are 3, 3, and 17. So you get what? 3 rest 17. How many people got this as your answer? Okay, any question? Do you see what to do? So on tonight's homework, they're going to not just give, they're not going to just give you three tri uh, trinomial. You got to make it into a trinomial. Does that make sense? So that's the part you got to do. Any questions? Can you do something like this for your homework tonight? Yeah. Good.